Perfect and Speedy Horse by Paris House. Mm, yeah, he's done it well. Uh, off the rest, um, Dan City Jewel just looked, he was well positioned with the winner early. He, he, possibly he, Ian Stream looks like he'll improve, uh, and likewise further back, Mayasim looked green halfway and came yeah, home nicely. Yeah, Mayasim didn't start particularly well, but travelled into the race. I think Mayasim definitely needs further. Dan City Jewel could be like Master of War in the previous race they had, and one of those that knows the job first time out, but just improves for the race and improves for the run. The one thing I liked about Dan City Jewel was actually put in the race, and we'll have learned a fair bit from that but I did like the way the winner travelled throughout the race and had enough at the end to hold off Ian's dream who definitely learnt throughout the race and I'm sure it won't be long before Jeremy Nasida is, is breaking the duck with the juveniles for the man who has broken the duck with the juveniles David Barron one for seven this year nice two year old Cosmic yeah. Chatter yeah Graham Gibbons comes for two rides his uh, next ride in, uh, I think the lads backed it he's delighted well done him uh, Graham gr- rides Noble Storm in our listed race winner of the race last year go to two rides can it be two winners? We'll find out. Let's get back to Jonathan and tidy up the SPs. Good professional performance from Cosmic Chatter. 9-1 to one for David Barron. Beat Ian's Dream, one of the 2-1 to one joint favourites. And the, um, the Southern Battalions were sent packing. Seven round in that. And that was a time of 1 minute 2.28. The uh, times aren't that quick at Haydock, but the ground is now officially good to firm. All over. Uh, we have just the three of them for the Diamond Jubilee Youngsters Stakes, which is just about the highlight on the card. Shane, six furlongs and 7,000. A new pearl is understandably a rather warm order at nine to two on. Indian Jade is six to one and it's ten to one and on the drift, uh, Lou Haif. Um, now, New Pearl has run once. And that was at uh, Newmarket, and I believe we might be able to see this. There, there he is, the grey, and I suppose it's sort of fairly significant that Jay Murta, who was seen on this channel about three and a half hours ago, having a right go on Thou in the Oaks, has shot all the way up to um, Pontefract to ride this one. And this was this is probably the reason why this is New Pearl's debut on rather different ground at Newmarket on 1,000 Guineas days when he was uh, up against the near side rail, and despite having to be rafted along, was drawing right away in the closing stages, winning by four and a half lengths and giving every impression that an extra furlong wouldn't go amiss. Uh, good figures he recorded for that, but it's always a but. Um, nothing else that ran in that race has done anything very much, so the form hasn't yet worked out. Conversely, of course, there's there's Lou Haif, who was third at Haydock about three weeks ago on his debut, and yes, he was beaten about um, seven lengths, but uh, the second has won since, so you know that form has been given a little bit of a boost. Uh, and the other one is Indian Jade, who is. Uh, also one for one, and that was at Beverly at the beginning of this month. There he is, Indian J, Kevin Ryan. Again, good to soft ground, rather different tonight, but he makes his ground down the outside. He was well fancied on this occasion, a nine to four shot. He's in front by the furlong pole just about, and he goes on to win. And although that might not be a new market maiden, the fourth home here has come out and won since. The third is run well since, probably better than the third round there, so that form's got some substance. So you've, you've got a... You've got New Pearl, who represents trainer David Brown, who of course last year was responsible for Frederick Engels, who was a Royal Ascot winner, Johnny Murtis riding, won at Newmarket. Hey, come on, it can't get beaten, can it? But the other two have both got ability, and the form of their races has worked out quite well. So it might not be entirely plain sailing. As we always like to say on these circumstances, I've seen better five to one on shots, to which you are entitled to say, well, just tell me one then. And of course I can't. Uh, they should be going in because they're bang on post time. And once they do go in, we'll be off to David for his excellent commentary on this small but fascinating race at Pontefract. And hopefully New Pearl will at least justify the reputation that he's so far garnered for himself. 
Let's watch him go in before handing up to David. I wonder, uh, I wonder how Johnny Murder got from Epsom to Pontefract. I can't imagine he drove. He'd still be he'd still be stuck on the M25. Um, anyway, he's he's in and he's there. That's Lou Hafe and Sam Hitchcock, and that will leave Indian Jade and Philip Makin, and this is David. So one left to go forward, and that's Indian Jade. We are set. And they're off, uh, racing all the way OK for the Diamond Jubilee Youngsters Conditions Stakes. And in the early stages, Johnny Murcher allows New Pearl to stride on into the lead, the grey, with Indian Jade tracking for Philip Makin in second spot, the light blue in a sheepskin noseband, and the yellow and blue at the back of the field, the blue cap, that is Lou Hafe. So at a steady-ish pace, it's New Pearl that leads them. So they're coming to the end of their first couple of furlongs. New Pearl by about half a length to Indian Jade and then sitting in third, Sam Hitchcock, aboard Lou Hafe. So approaching halfway and no more than a length and a half would separate the trio. And it's New Pearl, a very impressive winner at Newmarket on debut. They're past halfway now. Indian Jade, a Beverly winner. And then Lou Hafe, third at Haydock on debut in behind. About to turn into the home straight and come inside their final two furlongs here. And it's New Pearl just being nudged along by Johnny Murta, but rather more firmly Philip Makin is nudging away at Indian Jade on the outside. So into the home straight. And now New Pearl is asked to accelerate and has gone on by over a length. Murta just reaches for his whip, though. And this is looking a little bit more difficult than the market suggested it would be and this near side Indian Jade is coming alongside New Pearl so Indian Jade just about taking over to New Pearl could this be a huge shock it's Indian Jade it's going to make it two from two and cause a massive upset Indian Jade wins by over a length to New Pearl in second and Lou Hafe last of the three a turn up here in the Diamond Jubilee Youngsters Stakes oh dear oh dear you see you, you go off to Epsom hoping to win the Oaks and the horse doesn't act round the course, changes her legs all over the place in vow, and off you dash to Pontefract for a bit of compensation, courtesy of New Pearl, and New Pearl's been absolutely done in the end by Indian Jade. We saw Indian Jade's promising win at Beverly uh, at the beginning of last month. Well fancy on that occasion, Kevin Ryan's uh, two-year-old, and the form had been given some substance, and despite looking as if he might get the worst of the argument early in the straight. He's really stuck at it tenaciously, Indian Jade. He's worn down New Pearl. And uh, he's that horse in the end had no answer to the determination of Indian Jade. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm hearing excited voices in my ears. Uh, I, I understand the runner-up might have been traded at rather a short price, even short in the 5-1 to one on in running. But this Indian Jade, head just slightly to one side to start with, but then he really puts it, puts it down, gets to uh, New Pearl a furlong out, and the writing's on the wall then. And he goes on to win in a very resolute fashion. And, and Lou Hafe, who struggled a long way, has stayed on to some effect and isn't far behind. Indian J 13 to 2 for Philip Makin. New Pearl 9 to 2 on, 5 to 1 on, no 6 to 1 on in second.